The following video has been rated PG-13 for, eh, it's pretty good, if you're 13. Today we're going to start things in this rather unassuming looking ravine here in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we are in the Tremont area and uh, it's kind of hard to see but back there there's a steel plant, a very old steel plant and a very famous steel plant. Greetings my friends, it is I, your Uncle Splore and Ryan, uh, back in Cleveland again. Uh, first time I've been here in quite a few years, uh, certainly the first time I've been where I'm standing in quite a few years. Uh, doesn't look familiar, does it? Well, not yet, it doesn't. You see that little shed sticking up over the fence right there? That is a famous shed. In fact, of all the sheds out there, that might be one of the most well-remembered and fondly remembered sheds, at least of the sheds that I can think of. This view of the property probably gives you a much better idea as to what we're talking about. That's right, it's the Christmas Story House. And uh, join us today, if you will, as we do just a little more. In 1983, a movie came out that has been shown over and over and over and over and over at uh, the holidays in the U.S. at least, uh, ever since then. I believe it was filmed in 1982, however, and uh, was based on uh, a Gene Shepard novel by the name of uh, In God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash. And uh, the filming was split between Cleveland, here in Cleveland, and Toronto. But uh, here in Cleveland, we consider this to be our movie. We are currently on the corner of West 11th Street and Rowley in Tremont. Tremont is a, uh, it's an older neighborhood in Cleveland that has really been uh, reclaimed over the last several years. Uh, if you came back here maybe 20 years ago, uh, the house was here. Uh, as you can see, this, this Christmas story house was here, but it didn't look like this. It had been really redone quite a bit over the years. And uh, the neighborhood was, shall we say, um, lively? generally not the kind of lively that you want. More of the um, run away from everybody kind of lively. About several years ago, the house was uh, purchased by a fan of the, uh, the movie who had some funds laying around and restored to its Christmas story glory. Now I should point out that these, uh, the Christmas story was not filmed inside of this house. Uh, uh, most of it was not, however. Uh, but you can see the outside is certainly where they filmed it. And if you go into the backyard, uh, all the outdoor shots of the uh, property were filmed here uh, in the back as well, including that overlook behind the fence that takes you down to that steel plant we were talking about recently. Also, just in case I have to remind you, dog dew is not fertilizer. Pick up poop. Now, the people who purchased the Christmas Story House in the city have really done a great job of embracing it and turning it into a tourist mecca. And as I'm standing out here, uh, there's, there's people all over the place that are checking things out. Now, uh, growing up here, uh, this was not the way it always was. Uh, we did not generally have people uh, who even knew that this was the Christmas Story House. Uh, and certainly not walking around here, especially in the summer like we are right now. This is, this is mid-August as I come to you. Um, a lot of people walking around right now. It has really changed. The neighborhood is much more clean, uh, much more picked up, and uh, just much more pleasant. Across the street, you can see the Christmas Story uh, House gift shop. I'm sorry, a Christmas Story House gift shop. Uh, this is where all the gifts you uh, would want to buy would be purchased, as well as tickets for the tour. You can see uh, some some cars, some 1940s and 30s style cars over there to add to the ambiance. And uh, actually, if you go just past the Christmas Story House, parking lot over there as well as a blue house that is where the bumpuses would have lived now in the movies they never actually showed the bumpus hounds uh, um, so the bumpus house they did show the bumpus hounds this is where the neighbors uh, had all of their smelly hound dogs that would run over and uh, torment the old man who lived in this house right here so bumpus house uh, Parker house now I've only got about a half an hour today because I've got to get uh, back to my hotel and clean up for a wedding uh, I'm going to see if that's enough time for me to go here into the Christmas Story gift house, uh, get a ticket for a self-guided tour. I've been in there before, so I kind of know where things are. Uh, and take you guys in, uh, show you some of the items, show you some of the areas, uh, and then get out. So let's see what we can do starting over here. As you can see, they are decked out for the 4th of July and the Labor Day uh, holidays. 
lots of red, white, and blue on the leg lamp there. Some styrofoam rockets and beer koozies. Cleveland does love a good beer koozie. Wow, I have been in here before, but this has really come a long way from the early days. Uh, the last time I was here was probably 2011. Oh, nowhere near this big. It was a converted house at that time. Uh, I think it still is, but they've knocked out some walls and they've really flushed it out. Uh, none of none of the displays were here. Uh, here's those bumpus hounds that we were talking about a minute ago. You can see and that is about how many bumpus hounds there were as well. Of course, you got uh, Ralphie in the pink nightmare and uh, leg lamp ornaments. Being from Cleveland, of course, I've already got one of these. I've got some of the uh, ceramic houses. My mother is a fan of those. They've got some National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation pieces here. Actually, years ago when I was here, they were doing a cross-promotion where at night they, they had the lights from the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation movie, not the real lights, but it was supposed to be those lights, uh, up all over it and lit up like, you know, like the movie. Um, I don't think they've done that since then, but it was kind of cool to see. Got uh, tapestries over here. Not just tapestries, but uh, major award tapestries. Mixing in some Home Alone. Uh, look at this, they've got the Turtle Doves ornament from Home Alone Part 2. Uh, one that went to him and uh, one that he gave to the hobo. I'm sorry, the bird lady. Over here you have... Um, Chile! That must be Italian! You have a talking uh, pink nightmare uh, Zoltar type thing, although it kind of looks like Sally Jesse Raphael in a pink nightmare costume. I'm not sure if you kids know who that is, but uh, dating myself, I sure as heck do. And uh, just to the right of that, you've got all the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas items. Just to the left, of course, we have the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation items. Uh, a couple of cool mugs. Look at this, you have action figures of Chevy Chase. Look at those faces. Those are frightening. Wow. You have an elf. End cap right over here. A lot of stuff with uh, Will Ferrell. Uh, look, he's got a he's got an action figure too. Of course, none of this is creepy as the actual concept behind the elf on the shelf, which of course is for sale right here. You can buy leg lamps. Of course, I I already own this smaller version and have for about uh, 15 years. And then I think the rest of the store is pretty much devoted to the actual Christmas story itself. Uh, you got the, the uh, leg lamp cup, uh, mug, I guess. I actually kind of like that. If I had room in my luggage, I would buy that and bring it home. Several others. Shot glasses. Very popular in Cleveland, where we have nothing to do between the months of October and uh, May, but drink and bowl, of course. Over here we have Ralphie's uh, school, Cleveland Elementary, and this house. Uh, the funny thing is these items over here are representative of filming locations from Toronto rather than Cleveland. Over here, however, we have Cleveland, including that uh, very famous shed that I was talking about. You've seen the movie, you've seen the shed. You've got, uh, you've got Flick up there, who has uh, just adhered his tongue to the pole. You have the uh, Damper Brothers furnace shop, which is not actually in the movie, but an allusion to uh, the the furnace fighter that was his father. And of course, over here is Ralphie kicking the crap out of uh, his his bully, Scott Farkas. Well, look at this, you could actually buy some of the, the actual replica hats that you'd find in the movie. It's kind of cool. A lot of apparel, of course. Uh, here is a copy of the book that it was all based on. I've actually got this at home. It's actually a really good book. Not just about the Christmas story. Christmas story is actually just a small portion of this book. Uh, more of these really frightening action figures. Darren McGavin in action figure form. I never thought I'd see that. Of course, you can't have the Christmas story uh, without the purchase of a Christmas wish. It's the Red Rider carbine action. Uh, 200 shots. 650 shots says here. Uh... Air rifle. It does not, however, specify. Oh, wait, it does. There is a working compass and sundial in the stock. 
They've got uh, these leg lamp own beads. It kind of looks like a Pandora bead you put on your bracelet that are apparently uh, only found here in the Christmas Story Museum. Uh, this is a $40 Bengal uh, edition. And uh, you could actually buy here for $9 a decoder pin. There are numbers and letters on there, but I am too blind to read them. And now, with ticket in hand, it's time to head back across the street and do, you know, a little bit of that splorin' I mentioned. Of course, I can't go over there without pointing out that I believe this is supposed to represent the old man's Oldsmobile, because he was, after all, an Oldsmobile man. Of course, we have the home and uh, fire department here. These fine folks were the ones that rescued Flick from the pole after he got his tongue stuck to it. Now, I've done this tour before, it's been a few years, uh, but when we started the tour before, we, we went up these steps right here, and uh, you know, you can get your photo taken over here in front of the leg lamp, and then you headed in. Uh, can't do that today. Uh, you'll see these, these cones, the infamous cones, Cleveland loves our cones, by the way, uh, telling us not to go up there. I have been told it's because if you go up there, you will be swarmed by killer bees and killed. Uh, I put the killed part in there, but the swarmed by bees thing is, is true, actually. Now, I personally have a no death policy with my videos, so I'm just going to head right around the cones and uh, head to the backyard and, uh, you know, meet up with a tour there. And here we are in the backyard. There is the infamous shed that we were talking about earlier. I've got maybe about 10 minutes before the tour actually begins. Looks like I might be the first person to show up for this tour. Uh, over here, you can see this, this door right here that uh, comes up these stairs. This is where you could actually go if you were going to stay in the house. You can do that uh, up there. There's some windows and there's a room up there. You could actually stay at the Christmas Story House uh, for a price, of course. This yard has been uh, re-landscaped, of course, over the years. This is much, much, much nicer than it used to be, and certainly much nicer than it was in the movie. Um, you see this fence back here. We'll, we'll take you over to take a look past the fence in a moment, but uh, there, of course, is the, uh, the shed that I was talking about where Black Bart and his gang escaped. Uh, the Wrath of Ralphie and Old Blue, his, uh, his air rifle. Heading over to the fence, if you look over the fence, right now, you will see the, uh, the steel factory, the steel plant that we were talking about earlier. This was in the movie, if you went down there. You can actually see, uh, can't see it as well right now, it's summertime, there's a lot of leaves in the way obviously, but you can see this much better in the movie itself. You could also see certain areas where Ralphie and his friends were walking to and from school, right in this area. Uh, those are private properties, a lot of them around here. Can't really get to them right now. Uh, what we have to work with here is the Christmas Story House itself, uh, in the backyard that we are looking at right now. Uh, and then, actually, at the end of this video, I'm going to take you to downtown Cleveland, where they filmed a lot of the parade areas, uh, and they also filmed the Higby's department store scenes. Now, up until a few years ago, you could actually still go into those areas and uh, take a look and film. Right now, uh, you can't do that. The, uh, several years ago, uh, it was converted from the department store into what was at the time the uh, Greater Cleveland Area Convention and Visitor Bureau. Uh, they ran out of there for a while, and then they brought in what is now called the Jack Casino. And the Jack has moved in, and there's a casino where all that was before. And casinos, for fairly obvious reasons, don't really like people going and filming, so uh, I won't be able to do a whole lot of that, but we'll still take you down to the outside, you can kind of see it. Uh, you can see the public square area where the parades were held. Uh, you could still, if you've seen the movies, you'll, you'll recognize all of it. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in Cleveland, however. It is mid-August. Uh, temperatures are probably early to mid-70s, I'd say. If I was back in uh, Orlando right now, I'm sure it'd be probably mid to late 90s. So I'm kind of enjoying this. If I'm going to be standing outside the Christmas Story House waiting for the tour to start, this is good weather to do it at least. Very bright. Probably worth mentioning that the backyard looks a lot larger here than it did in the movies, and that's because it is much larger than it was in the movies. Uh, this house right here, you notice the wide berth that it has uh, before it hits the next house. That is uh, because there was a house here that is no longer standing, which means pretty much everything from here over is new, uh, was not in the movie, and actually 
There was another house on that side as well, between this one and the Bumpuses, that is no longer here as well. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the Bumpus house next door is uh, not really uh, the Bumpus house. It was not in the movies, but they have since uh, purchased it and turned it into the Bumpus house. And uh, you can, if you want, uh, for a price, stay there as well. It's a little more, uh, how do I put this, uh, rustic looking than this one. This all looks familiar. Now, after the, uh, the, the, the point where this gentleman gives us all the background of the house, uh, we got a little bit of time to walk around and, and check things out. Of course, this is the leg lamp. It's not the real leg lamp from the movie. Uh, a lot of this stuff uh, is not the, the real piece, but there is a museum next door that has some of the real pieces. But uh, some really good replicas, and obviously these are actually real in the sense that they came from that period. Uh, they're just not the screen-used ones. Um, here is the couch. Now, if you remember in the movie, the couch actually faced out the window at one point because uh, the, the old man and the, the mother uh, end the movie by looking outside. Uh, but really, the most important thing for us to remember is that uh, right here is, in fact, a can of Simon Eyes. Actually, just a quick aside, I love these old-fashioned Christmas uh, lights. Now, these obviously are not period accurate. These are a little bit more uh, modern. I'd say these are probably like a 1970s, 80s style, but I still love that. It's what I grew up with. Uh, beautiful tree, though. Not the tree from the movie, for obvious reasons, but a very festive tree here in Cleveland in August, nonetheless. And uh, you know, the bow is looking very festive. And there... There's the, uh, the Parker clan right now, the old man, uh, Ralphie and uh, Randy's mother, Ralphie, and of course, Randy, who uh, hopefully at this point could put his arms down. Here, of course, is the, uh, the leg lamp in the Fragile uh, crate. This is smaller than the real one, but uh, you know, it still gives a pretty good uh, feel for it. And uh, here's the door. This, this, this is the actual area, the door that was used. I think the door itself may have been replaced, but the, the door frame and all that uh, from the movie. And of course, you can see uh, the old man's hat, uh, Scott Farkas's uh, raccoon skin hat. Uh, you've got the uh, the mask from Black Bart. You've got the elf hat and something representing the pink nightmare. Uh, heading upstairs, uh, this is where the pink nightmare happened, of course, in this landing. Uh, well, not really in this landing. This this staircase was not really uh, here in the movie. It has been redone since then. It actually faced a different direction. But you can still get an idea of what we're talking about. You look out the window and see the rest of the neighborhood. As you can see, those are the uh, sides, uh, the sizes of the, the yards in this neighborhood normally. Uh, a lot of cars in the backyard of that one. Maybe that's the real Bumpus house. Of course, when we get to the top of this landing, you see the bedrooms and such. Um, can't go in there. That is where people who are staying will now stay. I believe that would be the uh, mother and father's bedroom normally. So, I hope everybody's ready because we're out of time. In comes the next group. Uh, life, life boy. It sounds like we need to get going, so I'm going to take a quick step over here. Here is, here is Ralphie's room with Randy. Obviously a little bit larger than in the movie. And now we're going to head back downstairs because our part of the tour is now finished. I just got confirmation that is the original shed that uh, Black Bart crawled over. But what is missing is over here, out of the uh, kitchen, the window that Ralphie crawled out of is missing. So uh, now if you want to crawl out, you're going to have to bust out the wall. And uh, gosh darn it, they don't like when you bust holes into the house. 
uh, next part of the tour, we're going into the museum. See our tour guide uh, popping in the, the code. We'll talk about some stuff. Keep people yeah, from sure walking away with items. Further. First room in, you can see a lot of the uh, art that was inspired by the movie. I don't know that any of this art was actually in said movie. I rather doubt it. Here's the uh, the BB gun in question. Just learned that everything in here is either uh, from the movie, inspired by the movie, or, I'm sorry, inspired the movie itself, or is uh, fan art. So I believe, for instance, that this robe right here really was uh, his mother's robe. Melinda Dillon wore this in the movie. Which I believe makes this the real Red Rider BB gun. Got some uh, magazines. Some copies of the Christmas story. And speaking of Black Bart from earlier, you can see some of the Black Bart uh, gang costumes right here. Here's uh, BBs that go in the Red Rider BB gun. Got an entire history of the BB gun here, actually. Uh, not just the one from the movie, but the uh, Red, Rider, Red Rider BB gun itself. kind of see a timeline going here. It's the uh, 1895 where the house was built originally. I didn't realize it was that old. I figured it came from the, the 1910s, 1920s, but apparently it's older. Uh, 1934, uh, 1994, my summer story was filmed. Uh, this is uh, Charles Grodin right here. Uh, I believe this was like the, the unofficial sequel. Uh, you can see Brian Jones purchasing this house on eBay, and then uh, the renovations going in 2005. Wow. You can see some of the, the cast right here. Looks like 2008 when they had the uh, a separate gift shop going. And 2018 when they opened the Bumpus house. Uh, this is actually, when I was here last, this is what it looked like. Uh, here's the uh, costumes from the singing waiters in the Chop Suey Palace scene. Uh, something that we probably won't get a whole lot of uh, moving forward. The real blackboard from the school uh, with the A++. Uh, obviously, I think the A++ has probably uh, been uh, reapplied. I could be wrong about that. They even have here uh, one of the original doors up on the wall. And of course, right over here, Flash Gordon and Ming the Merciless costumes. I don't believe these were in the movie uh, at all, but these are apparently originals from the actual uh, production. Kind of cool that those are here. Now these were here last time I was here, but they were over in what is now the gift store. Uh, these are Randy's uh, costumes. Actually much smaller than I thought they were. There's the uh, Mama's Little Piggy bib. We'll see how he ended up looking when it was all put together. This room looks to be largely a uh, ode to Darren McGavern, who, who among his many roles was the father. Here's his jacket. Uh, famous from the scene where he's changing the tire, of course. This is actually a Darren McGavern life mask. Uh, not to be mistaken with a death mask. This is actually where they used uh, things like this to, to make prosthetics and, and makeup uh, tests in Hollywood. Here's here's the bully case. It's got Farkas and Grover Dill. You can kind of see their hats and jackets and such. Yes, that is a fox face. Here's some of the toys you would have seen in the Higby window. And actually, in terms of Higby, which you see right here, the Higby company, that really was a Cleveland uh, icon uh, department store. We'll, we'll actually take a drive by there later and uh, take a look at what has become of the windows. Uh, you can't get in there right now. It is a casino. They don't like you filming. And uh, here's some of Ralphie's clothes, which again looks smaller than I would have expected. 
as we are walking back to the car, I wanted to show this. This is the Bumpus house. Uh, not, not really in the movie at all. It's just kind of alluded to. Uh, you can see uh, up in the window, there's a stained glass Bumpus hound up there. Uh, this is being used as an Airbnb. You can stay here. And uh, from what I've heard from some of the guides, uh, this might actually be the better option if you're looking to uh, get a, a cool experience. Uh, doesn't have all the history associated with the other house, but uh, very nice accommodations. Now right here you see Cleveland's uh, Public Square. That's the terminal tower right there that's been around forever. Uh, if you've seen the Christmas story and you've seen the parade scenes, that was all filmed in Public Square here which has changed quite a bit since the last time I was here, but right there in front of the terminal tower, you see this building right here and this building right here. Uh, that is, uh, that's, that's where they were standing to film everything. In fact, the windows where Ralphie was watching the, uh, the, the first night of Christmas uh, season, they, they had the, the windows full of toys, and uh, right there, uh, that's where that all took place. And here's sort of a better view for you. We're going to actually head up around it. This is uh, West Superior right here, one of the main thoroughfares of Cleveland that goes through Public Square. Uh, but we're going to actually go up a little further, and I'll actually take you by uh, that window as well as where Ralphie and his family were standing for the Christmas parade. Right up here, you can see there's the Renaissance Hotel to your right. Uh, there is the front of Tower City. By the way, also, the front of Tower City here, if you've seen the Avengers, uh, this was used as Germany. This is where all of the uh, Germans were outside and Loki was lording over them before being attacked by Captain America and by uh, Iron Man. So that is right there. You can see it. that was the Germany Museum. But these windows right here, these yellowish windows at the Jack Casino, that is where uh, the windows were for the Christmas story. And actually, if you were going to go inside the building, that is where the Santa scene happened. Uh, is the department store. You, you remember, the, the hill was set up, Santa was on the top with his elves, and uh, the kids would come up, and then Santa would uh, throw them down the slide, and they'd scream. Uh, also, uh, where the kids uh, met the Wizard of Oz, because I like the Wizard of Oz. And with that, I think we're going to call it a day. Hey, if you haven't already done so, right below there, there's a subscribe button. Uh, you know, I personally would very much appreciate it if you gave it a little tickle. Uh, maybe a thumbs up, you know, if you're a fan of the Christmas story from that house. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you next time when we do just a little spoil.